Good morning, and welcome to Bible Truth for Kids. Today our story is called The Arrest of Jesus. It's very late in the evening now. Jesus has finished praying with his disciples, and they've crossed over a brook called Kidron, and they're going into a garden on the Mount of Olives. The garden was called the Garden of Gethsemane, and that garden had high walls, and it had a gate. It was a privately owned garden, possibly owned by the family of John Mark, the same Mark that wrote the Gospel of Mark. Now Jesus and his disciples knew John Mark's family well, and they had permission to use that garden. They often went there. Jesus loved it. It was private. It was beautiful. It was the perfect place to pray, the perfect spot to be able to talk to his disciples without interruption. It was a good place to get away from all the festivities and noise of all the different festivals that would be going on in Jerusalem. Well, we know that John Mark was in the garden that evening. Now, he might have been sleeping by this time in one of the buildings of his family in the Olive Grove there. We don't know, but he was there. Now Judas also is not there. He has gone to get those religious leaders. It's all planned out. And Judas is leading them. He's leading them into the garden. And they're coming, a huge mob of them, a huge crowd. There's chief priests, there's elders, there's scribes, there's guards. There's soldiers, there's weapons, there's torches, there's everything you can imagine. I mean, what were they thinking? That Jesus had an army in there? Now we don't know if they broke down the gate into the garden or if John Mark woke up hearing the commotion and ran out to let them in. We don't know, but we do know that John Mark was only wearing a bed sheet. And John Mark followed them in. He didn't know what all this commotion was about. But Jesus knew what it was about. The disciples didn't know. They heard, they heard all this noise. Jesus said, the betrayer is near. Jesus knew what was about to happen and he was prepared for it. Now, as they approached, Jesus got up and went towards them and he said, who are you looking for? And they said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I am he. And you know what he said, I am? They all fell back, all of it. What chaos, like a domino effect. What authority and power I am, those words had on that crowd. Jesus is God. Jesus is the one in control of this situation. Now Judas had arranged with them a signal. He said, the one that I kiss is the one that you are to arrest. Wow. You know, when suddenly the disciples realized what was going on, Peter took out his sword and he cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest. His name was Malchus. Jesus said, put away your sword. They weren't there to fight. Jesus was going to give himself up voluntarily. He knew what was about to happen. He said to them, I am the one that you're looking for. Let my disciples go. Well, and they did, and those disciples took off. But Jesus knelt down, and he healed the ear of Malchus. You know, that was the last miracle that Jesus ever performed before he went back to heaven. He healed an enemy. The Bible tells us that God is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Well, the disciples had fled. They looked around. They saw John Mark. They seized him. But John Mark let go of that bedsheet he was wearing, and he ran naked through the garden to get away. It was a terrifying night. Well, where were they taking Jesus? They didn't have any handcuffs. They had to bind him up with ropes. They were taking him to the palace of the high priest. They wanted to make sure that they had enough evidence to put Jesus on trial. Now, this is what the palace of the high priest looked like. They had two courtyards, and in the courtyards, they were outside. They put fires burning there so that people on a cold night could keep themselves warm. There might be guards there, servants there, bystanders, who knows? Well, Peter and John 
Although they had run away when the other disciples did too, they stayed behind and followed at a distance. They wanted to know what was going to happen. And so they got into the courtyard. Peter wasn't allowed into the palace. So Peter stayed out in the courtyard and he warmed himself around one of those uh, fire pits sitting with the other people there. Well, they took Jesus inside, first of all, to a high priest called Annas. And uh, it was kind of like a pre-trial. They wanted to make sure they had an, uh, enough evidence to have a real trial in their minds. So Annas began to question Jesus about his teaching and about his disciples. But Jesus just said, why are you questioning me? I've always taught openly in the synagogues and in the temple. I've never said anything in secret. Why don't you ask the people who have listened to me? They'll tell you what I said. Well, when he said that, one of the guards whacked him right across the face. He said, how dare you talk to the high priest like that? Well, you know, Annas didn't really like that answer either. So he says, send him on to Caiaphas. Now Caiaphas was the high priest for that year. He had much more authority than Annas. And you know, it's the middle of the night but they were prepared for this. They had gathered everybody together, chief priests, elders, scribes, the whole council was there. And they had also got together some people to testify against Jesus, say some things about him. But you know, those people couldn't even agree about what to say. So finally, some of them got up and they just told lies. They told lies about Jesus. Now Caiaphas wanted Jesus to answer those accusations. But Jesus wouldn't. He didn't say anything. Well, Caiaphas was getting enraged. He said, well, are you the Christ, the Son of God, or not? Jesus said, I am. Well, Caiaphas said, there, you're blaspheming. You're calling yourself God. You're condemned to death. He turned around to the council that was behind him. You can see them all sitting there. He said, what's your decision? Is this man guilty of death or not? And they said, yes, he is for calling himself God. He deserves to die. Now the Romans had given the religious leaders authority to rule over the people, but they didn't have the authority to put someone to death. Only the Romans could do that. And so they would have to bring Jesus before the Roman governor in the morning for another trial. In front of a room in front of the Romans. And so in the meantime, they led Jesus down into a room, which was really more like a hole in the ground, to keep him there until they could bring him to Pilate in the morning. And you know, while he was down there in custody, those guards beat him, they spit on him, and they mocked him. They blindfolded him and they hit him, and then they would say, prophesy tell us who hit you you know you're god who was it that hit you well and they beat and spit on him and insulted him for a long time but what about peter out in that courtyard what's going on out there you know he'd been sitting by the fire and a servant girl a servant uh, girl of the high priest she came out into the courtyard and she saw peter she looked at him and she said, I recognize you. You're one of the people that follows after Jesus. Peter said, oh, no, I'm not. You got me mistaken for someone else. I don't even know who he is. I don't know. Well, you know, a little while later, Peter got up and he went to the entryway and another servant girl came out and she said to the people around her, hey, you know, this guy over here, he's a follower of Jesus. Peter said, no, I'm not. I don't know him. I don't know what you're talking about. He walked away. Well, about an hour later, some other bystanders saw Peter and they went up to him and they said, oh, we know that you're one of Jesus' followers. We can tell by your accent that you're from Galilee. Peter swore. He said, I do not know the man. I don't know who you're talking about. Well, the sun was just coming up. It was morning. 
And now they were leading Jesus across the courtyard to take him to the palace where um, Pilate was. And as he was going across the courtyard, Peter turned and looked, and Jesus looked right at him in the eyes. And just as he did, the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Jesus had said, before the rooster crows in the morning, you'll deny me three times. You'll pretend you don't know me. Wow, can you imagine how ashamed and sick Peter felt? You know, the Bible tells us that he went out and he wept bitterly. Well, you know, this is where our story ends today. Jesus is going across the courtyard now. He's going to be taken before Pilate for another trial. But what I want you to remember from today's story is the rooster. You know, Peter failed Jesus miserably that night. He disowned him. He lied about him. He messed up bad. But you know, the rooster, when the rooster crows, that's the sign of a new day. Would Jesus forgive Peter? He will. He'll forgive Peter, just like he will forgive you and I. For everything we've ever done, no matter how badly we've messed up or lied, he will forgive us. And then, it's like a rooster's crow. It's the start of a new day. We can start over. Okay, see you next time.